submerging rectangle cut potatoes into 350 degree oil is common practice in most commercial kitchens. Turning a mundane root vegetable into a golden, crispy, salty fare. But what is not commonplace is taking that used cooking oil and turning it into biodiesel. We're using canola oil for its entire lifespan and then extending it. You're kind of returning it back to where it started in a way. The process of turning cooking oil into biodiesel for the big wheel van is done in the couch and valley. Here we've got the cooking oil as, it's, as it starts. It's been filtered, it's been refined to some extent. We've taken out the prawn tails and the french fries and now it's ready to be converted into biodiesel. Uh, we've preheated it up to our reaction temperature, about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And what we're going to do is carefully add uh, a mixture of, of lye and methanol uh, to the reaction flask. If we've measured everything out correctly, we'll make some biodiesel. B20, most warranties now allow people to use B20 in their, in their new vehicles. And that's just a blend of 80% regular diesel with 20% biodiesel and they blend right here at the pump. They mix perfectly together so you can go back and forth from bi-diesel to regular diesel. And the needs of the Couch and Bi-Diesel Co-op members who were really the, the diehards, they didn't want to use 20% when they could use 100%. We've got the B100 here, 100% carbon neutral and get all the maximum um, environmental and health benefits from a, from a fuel. Brian Roberts started making biodiesel in his backyard in the early 2000s. From there, he helped form the Couch and Biodiesel Cooperative, which started selling their products at the Duncan Farmer's Market. Almost political as much as environmental at the time, I just really wanted to know where my fuel was coming from. After selling over 600 liters in one day at the Farmer's Market, it was time to come up with a better solution. The co-op currently operates two biodiesel pumps in the Couch and Valley. The cost of running, maintaining, and expanding the co-op is a costly endeavor especially when competing in the billion dollar fuel industry. So Brian and his team had to get creative. We created a nonprofit called Couch and Energy Alternative Society and we kind of expanded our focus to trying to kind of grow local low carbon economies. One of the initiatives of Couch and Energy Alternatives is the Community Carbon Marketplace. It's an online platform for businesses, individuals and local governments to offset their carbon footprint to become carbon neutral. Welcome to the Community Carbon Marketplace, the virtual farmer's market of the carbon market, where your organization can be a seller of community carbon credits you produce by reducing emissions. Brilliant idea. It essentially allowed um, cities such as ourselves and municipalities the ability to invest in our own local economy and in our own local initiatives to lower our GHGs so that we could become carbon neutral. GHGs, or greenhouse gas emissions, are also lowered by the city of Duncan by using biodiesel in their garbage truck. It's one of the first municipalities to use biodiesel in their fleet vehicles and we have since engaged many more communities. We certainly hope it is an example by which other municipalities can engage to lower their footprint. Why wouldn't we do it? It just comes down really to we need to take all the steps that we can to, to change our impact, our negative impact on the environment. This is here, it's local, so why wouldn't we do it? The biodiesel co-op, Cowich and Energy Alternatives. You'd think Brian would have enough on his plate, but he says there are other petroleum-based products that could use a biodiesel alternative. So he created Ergo Eco Solutions. Um, if you think about all the things like the petrochemical industry does with, with oil, um, hydrocarbons, you can make a lot of those same things from uh, like recycled cooking oil, like form releases, paving release agents, uh, solvents, uh, soaps. But a nonprofit is not a good vehicle to be able to do research and development if you want research and development grants. And so we ended up creating social enterprise, ergo eco solutions to do the commercial waste cooking oil collection, uh, to expand that, and also to do an R&D program into all the great things that we can make from the, from the cooking oil. Brian and his team have the knowledge to create and expand their biodiesel lineup of products, but to ensure those products turn into a sustainable business model that works within a circular economy, they've signed on to take part in Project Zero. 
Project Zero is all about building a circular economy on Vancouver Island. Uh, what we know to date is that only 9% of our economy is circular, which means we throw out a huge amount of waste. And your ventures, your ideas are going to contribute to a circular economy and help Vancouver Island be a leader in the world in circularity. Project Zero is a five-year action plan run by the nonprofit Synergy Foundation. Their goal is to help businesses not only reduce their waste, but to turn waste into a product. Team at Ergo have really been incredible. They've already been in the biodiesel business for a number of years, and now they're really looking at new innovative products. There's so many products we use in construction, road building, that are petrochemical based, and they're coming up with alternatives that'll be brand new to the marketplace. And we feel that this can be a solution for construction and road building in Canada, but also all over the world. Project Zero is in its first year of their action plan, which includes an incubator program, giving startup businesses such as Ergo information they'll need to create a pitch-ready business plan, connection to experts, and access to investors looking to invest in the circular economy. We realized that we needed a place to specifically work on Vancouver Island initiatives and work with small businesses. First Nations, all kinds of pe people in the community. And it's really about kind of giving back on our home turf. Work on more innovative initiatives here because we really feel that Vancouver Island can become a global hub of the green economy. No silver bullet solutions for it, being able to replace petroleum. You know, we see diesels being used for quite a long time, I think still into the future because all the heavy duty machinery um, is gonna be using it. If we can still make use of this waste cooking oil, and use it for a good purpose and that's that's still carbon neutral and helping to provide a service while not impacting the planet then we see as i said using kind of what you've got where you've got it most canadians don't give their waste a second thought we just toss it in the garbage to be transported to the nearest landfill out of sight out of mind project zero is trying to change that mindset to make a waste into our greatest resource only time will tell how their guidance with Ergo Eco Solutions will change the oil industry. Food for thought next time you bite down on a golden, crispy froth.